there is such an important lesson to be learned in honoring your particular path, your particular journey. Your, I like to say success is not a cookie cutter event. It is a customized journey of evolution. And so, like you said, it doesn't stop and it doesn't look for me like it looks for you. And yes, we show up as our confident selves and our you know, brilliance and, and we are committed to honoring the gifts that we have on the inside of us. But that is a daily decision because there are always distractions and things coming to deter us from doing what we've been sent here to do. Hey, everybody, it's Ayanna Blount, the passion strategist, and you are doing Life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth Podcast. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Live in Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you are here and I don't take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A-game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. And so family, I want to remind you to please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Because as you know, I set a lofty goal to touch one million hearts within the first two years, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. And don't forget, there's a community button that's um, in the show notes. So make sure to click that button so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. Speaking of conversations, today, okay, today's conversation is going to be a gym dropping, note taking type conversation. So if you don't have a pen and paper next to you, I'm going to need you to go get it. Pause and go get your pen and your paper. If you are driving in your car, you know, come back and re-listen to this episode with your pen and your paper. Because today I'm sitting down with Ayanna Blount to talk about why you need a strategy in order to manifest the life that you desire and deserve. Now, for some of you, I know that it hasn't clicked just yet about why you need a strategy, why it's needed. And why you even need a strategy to ensure that every area of your life is in alignment with purpose. Well, guess what? We're going to talk about it today because I want your 21 to be better than your 20. As a matter of fact, I want your 21 to be better than your 19. And I want your 21 to be better than your 18. Why? Because I care about you. And we, as in everybody in this world, (laughs) We need your talent. We need your skill so we can fully embrace our calling. All right. So with that being said, let me formally introduce you to Ayana. All right. So we can get into this good conversation. The Passion Strategist helps you to get the keys to success, unlock the door, and unleash the winner within. A master communicator, Ayana is an award-winning speaker, strategist, coach and author. She has collaborated with creators and entrepreneurs, coordinating events for community-based organizations, and facilitated workshops and training seminars for corporate clients using her signature gifts and goals strategy to define visions and execute winning outcomes. A Philadelphia native, as relatable as Rocky and authentic as the cheesesteak, her delicious brand of visualizing and activating success through practical steps make her sought after by the emerging entrepreneur and the corporate change agent alike. Certified in the areas of Lean Six Sigma, Crucial Conversations, Diversity and Inclusion Training and Development, as well as executive coaching, Ayana delivers knowledge-based content in an emotionally intelligent and transformative package that calls the hearer beyond limiting beliefs into limitless success. 
With a style that captivates and engages her audiences in courageous conversations, Ayana's electric energy and encouraging words in tandem with the proverbial hug and push inspires innovators to be purpose-driven, passion forward, and master at the power of positive mindset thinking. So, sis, it is time for you to get into this amazing conversation with my new friend, Ayana Blout. Ayana, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. My pleasure, my pleasure. I am super excited for, for this conversation. And I say this all the time with every guest. And um, it is it is genuine, it's legit. I, I'm, a, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I just have conversations with some with some amazing, you know, with some amazing people. And when you are operating a purpose, you can be excited every day. Every time you do something, it's it's possible to be excited. So I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this conversation. And, um, you know, we have a lot, we have a lot of things in in common. So I'm excited about that too, because, you know, you're all about strategy and planning and I'm all about strategy and planning as well. Um, I like to take action because that's what it's all about. And I think that's the need for a lot of people. So we're going to, we're going to step on some toes today, but that's going to be all right. Cause that's what we do here on the Live Her True podcast. We step on toes (laughs) because, you know, the truth hurts sometimes, but it's definitely Mm. what it is that we need to hear to move to that next level. So absolutely. So I'm excited about the conversation. But I like to start off with just talking about how I come to know the person that I'm speaking with. And um, I mentioned this to you already, but I'll just, you know, let the listeners know. So you guys, I had a podcast interview with uh, Nick Scott. She was here on the podcast. Shout and out. out to Nick <laughs> for making this uh for making this connection. Shout out to Nick. And yes. um, Ayana, so Nick and I went to the same college. We was there nice. at the same time, but didn't know it. So okay. we sitting here, we were on the um, we're on the podcast episode. And we just talking about like, like, oh my God, you was there. Do you remember this class? And it, it was <laughs> crazy. But I know Nick from YouTube because she was mm-hmm. a hair blogger. And I followed right. her for, you know, for a long time when I first went natural um so that's where I know her from and to see her doing something completely different I was just like oh my god I gotta have her on a podcast so I kind of like banged her a little bit (laughs) when I was talking to her I banged her you know just a little bit because um she's the first podcaster I mean not podcaster she's the first youtuber that I pitched that actually said yes and wow. did yeah, and did the podcast because I pitched a couple of um, YouTubers that I followed for a long time and and know their journey and think they you know they'll provide value you know to right. my listeners and so yeah so had Nick on the podcast and she recommended you she was like hey I have a client who's awesome you know she's a, she'll be amazing on your podcast and you know you should definitely um check her out and um hit her up and so I did I was like okay you know I'm all about meeting new people and having great conversations on the podcast right yeah and so I checked you out on Instagram and got addicted you know how you do you know, <laughs> I was just like let me just let me just click on the IG stories button. Let me just watch it. all the videos. Let me just binge watch all the videos. And so I was just like, wow, this is going to be, this is going to be good. Because right now we're in the midst of um, the series Strategize Your Vision. It's based off mm-hmm. of my master like class, Strategize Your Vision. And so when I was listening to all of your videos and binge watching, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be the perfect person to sit down and have a conversation about strategy. Wow. Because I wow. think sometimes people don't quite understand what I mean when I say you need to put a, a strategy in place to live the life Absolutely. that you want to live. We Absolutely. put strategies together to build businesses. We put strategies together, you know, to change careers, to go after our mm-hmm. careers. Mm-hmm. You know, we have all these different strategies for everything else, but we don't necessarily, you know, create one to build a life that we want, right? right. So this is what I teach people in my master life class. So we're going to talk about it today. Let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited about it. So tell us about your journey. Why did you become a success coach? 
Wow, such a kind of loaded question, but at the same time, um, a very pivotal moment for me, right? So we're in the throes of the pandemic, as we all know, right? And so um, I think we all have come to this understanding um, and even this agreement that there was a need to change, right? There was a need to pivot. Um, and so it takes for some people a pandemic, other people it's, you know, growing frustrated with their current course in life. Um, but for me, it was really about God's plan um, kind of coming together um, to use my greatest fear to actually catapult me into my birthright of brilliance. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, you literally are talking to a person who is a success coach today um, and who is a strategizer for those who are looking to find their definition of success. But at one point in my journey, I was actually afraid of success. And I know that sounds crazy. Um, I know that is not something that is widespread. Nobody talks about the phobia, the fear of success, right? But that was literally where I lived. I lived in a place where I was paralyzed mentally um, at just the thought of physically, emotionally, even financially experiencing success in, in a real and tangible way. And so for me, the moment of reckoning came when I, uh, one day I remember my daughter who is now seven, mm -hmm. she was probably, I don't know, maybe three. Um, and I saw her doing what lots of little girls do, like they play dress up, right? And she was walking around in a pair of my high heels. And, you know, most moms had that, oh, and for me, it was immediately this moment of reckoning. And the thought that immediately downloaded into me was, oh my God, am I leaving her shoes that are even worthy of walking in? And so that thing hit me so heavy that I just literally decided that at that moment, I had an obligation. I had a commitment that I had made when I chose to accept the responsibility for being her mother to in, embody what it is for a woman to be secure, for her to be successful, and for her to strive towards everything that she knows that she can have and not subject her to self-sabotage and limiting beliefs. When we pass down things to our girls, we want them to get maybe our sense of style or um, a certain look or even um, you know the what we would consider the best parts of us, right? But nowhere in that contract do we want to have our girls um, experience a passing down of fear and certainly not a fear of success. And so that is literally the moment the passion strategist was born. Um, that moment where I said, you know, this is bigger than me and this is going to transcend beyond my lifetime. And so, okay, here's the challenge. What are you going to do about it? And so here I am, you know, as a success, success coach who can literally talk to your listeners, my listeners and clients and, and do it from an authentic place. Why? Because I am you. Um, I have done every method of self-sabotage you can possibly think of all stemming from that fear of what if it actually works you know there's a quote that says what if I fail no darling what if you fly and I had to really drink that thing in and digest it to really in totality take it in and and and, and just let it do the work that it was designed to do so, you know, we all have our different starting places. We all have those um, platforms, you know, that we find ourselves um, standing on and sometimes jumping off of, and that happened to be mine. So my daughter absolutely um, changed my life in more ways than one. And what you see before you today, the passion strategist, the success coach is one of those ways. Brand, thank you for sharing that. That was good. Like when you said, am I leaving her shoes that she can walk in? I literally got chills. I literally got chills because I can just only imagine. I'm not a mom yet, but I can, but I am somebody's child. So I can Absolutely. only imagine how you felt in that moment. Because how many, how many parents look at their child and have those exact same thoughts, right? Especially probably when the baby, when you first bring the baby home and they brand new and you're like, oh my God, I am responsible for a whole nother person. A whole nother person. A whole, man, a whole nother person. And it's like, yeah. do I really know who I am? So that I part. 
yeah how i'm gonna be responsible for a whole other person when i barely know who i am you know See, this is lakeisha speaking the truth she's already at it this is what she does yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah and you know you being afraid of success um that doesn't sound crazy I think a lot of people are afraid of, of success and mm-hmm. don't realize that they're afraid of success and so they are misdiagnosing themselves Absolutely. and not realizing that they're self-sabotaging because you know sometimes yeah. we, we can need way too much credit we oh gosh yes we get people way yeah. too much credit you know it's like it's easy to look outside of ourselves to blame everybody else mm-hmm. and not really take responsibility for what it is that we are doing you know right. um and you know because even like right before you know we started the conversation I was telling you how I'm excited for 21 but also mm-hmm. like terrified yes. and I'm doing everything in my power not to have that fear of success you know because right. Like, man, God, if you just do like 10% of what I've dreamed, yes, if you you do 5% of what I'm asking for, it's Mm -hmm. going to stretch me in ways that I am still battling on whether or not I can even stretch that far. Oh, yeah. You know, I I, I put on social media the other day because I gave a suggestion of books that I'm reading. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is um, one. This is the book that I'm reading, Exodus and Numbers, because I want to study. Because I've been studying the Israelites. Okay. And I posted this book because I said that you know this book is going to help me to understand why I doubt more and trust less. That's good. Trust God. Good. Less. Why do I do that? And I, once I understand why I do it, I need mm-hmm. to know what am I going to do to turn that thing around? So this book is going to, you know, give me the action steps, help me to understand yeah. why, and yeah. then give me the, the actionable steps that I need to, that I need to trust God more and then doubt less, because that's what the Israelites experienced, you know, during their time of being lost and wandering around in the will in the wilderness, because mm-hmm that's the insecurity you know overcome them and that's what we do on a daily basis that's why i tell people self-help is a daily commitment absolutely commitment it's not a once a week or twice a month that's where you need to start until you get to your daily commitment then okay start there right (laughs) it's a daily it's a daily commitment Mm -hmm. um because I, I, I hear all the time, because I, I share my story about surviving sexual abuse. And so mm-hmm. people tell me all the time, you know, that I'm so confident and, you know, I sound so courageous. Like, how can you talk about it and, you know, just be so passionate about, you know, helping others? And I'm like, because yeah. I work on my mindset every day. Absolutely. Every day. Every day. Like, please don't think that I don't, sometimes when I'm just drifting off on the couch, my mind doesn't go back to that, you know, mm-hmm. to those moments because it. I'm human. It, right. I, you know, my mind goes there sometimes. I'm human, but I work on my mindset on a daily basis because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, purpose is bigger than me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that one of the things that you said that was key was you talked about the human part of the process, right? So I think that a lot of times, especially when you're talking to, um, you know, the folks that we serve, they are very much disconnected from their own process, but addicted to another person's process. And so there's an unlearning that that has to happen um, to bring them to a place of ownership and investment in who they were uniquely created to be and how much weight they actually carry, you know, as a contributor to this world. And, and so, you know, I would challenge folks um, as they're pursuing success and as they are trying to figure out what is my path, what is my purpose, what's my passion? You know, you have got to first get clear on the fact that you need to kind of unwire some stuff and and, and relearn and, and, and undo some of that stinking thinking because it's got you twisted to the point that you literally are addicted to my chapter 10, but you're completely disconnected from your chapter one. Mm-hmm. And the reality is this, 
in order for you to even have gotten to your chapter one, you had to start at ground zero. Mm -hmm. We all did. Mm -hmm. And so there is such an important lesson to be learned in honoring your particular path, your particular journey. Your, I like to say success is not a cookie cutter event. It is a customized journey yeah. of yeah. evolution. Uh -huh. And so like you said, it doesn't stop and it doesn't look for me like it looks for you. And yes, we show up as our confident selves and our, you know, brilliance and, and we are committed to honoring the gifts that we have on the inside of us. But that is a daily decision because there are always distractions and things coming to deter us from doing what we've been sent here to do. But the question is, are you going to, um, I posted something just yesterday. I call my Monday's Mindset Monday. And I said, okay, are we going to uh, be limited by our challenges or are we going to learn to challenge our limits? That is the question. Man. Are we going to be challenged by our limits or are we going mm -hmm. to limit our challenges? I absolutely, I absolutely love that. I'm going to need you guys to sit on that for a second because I'm going to sit on that for a second too <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and meditate and meditate on that. You know, oh my God, we have so much in common. You know, success is a customized journey. I 100% agree with that as well. So even through my slide class, Strategize Your Vision, even though I'm teaching everybody the same steps, everybody's journey is going to be different. So at the end of the class, everybody's strategy is going to be a little bit different because we are different. We are unique. Our purpose is us apart from everybody else hey family my master life class strategize your vision is officially open now is the time for you to get the help that you need to avoid being in the same position that you're in now next year let's work together so you can finally have the life that you desire and deserve all you have to do is go to strategizeyourvision.com for more information and to enroll today now back to the conversation and you know we're gonna we're going to get into purpose in a moment, but I, I just wanted to share with you guys how, you know, the moment where I realized that success is a customized journey because, you know, Ayana, I was born and raised in projects right outside of Chicago. So I'm the first generation, everything in my family. Wow. In high school, college, go to law school, get a master's degree, you know, wow. buy a house, become an author. Like I'm the first generation, everything. So, you know, being raised in the projects, we didn't see a lot of positivity growing up. Mm -hmm. And my mother's husband is who sexually abused me to really, you know, draw, you know, paint the picture for yeah. the environment that I grew up in. So when I got out, you know, and graduated from college, my siblings coming behind me, I wanted to make sure, especially my sister, I really, you know, attached myself to my sister because I really wanted her to be successful. And mm -hmm. so I forced my path onto her. If you want to be successful, then you have to do this and this and this and this and this. Right. Because that was the path that I discovered. And for me, that path worked, you know, because right. it's to get me out of the ghetto but it kept me out of the ghetto because you guys it's one thing to get out it's a whole other thing not to go back okay once you that get out part. Of it, stay out of it all right <laughs> so, <Thank you. laughs> so this path this journey it worked for me and you know she she told me one day and she was just like but I can get to destination C maybe I don't have to go A B then C well how come right. I can go A, D, and then to C. Like, why do I have to go this exact same path? And that just like hit me like a ton of bricks because mm -hmm. my sister is eight years younger than me. And in that moment, I was just like, wow. Like, who said that she can't go mm -hmm. left and right, you know, to get to her, her level of success? Who says that her success had to look like mine? Right. Who that but it was my my limiting belief right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that forced me to think that one way and so her challenging me helped me to realize how everybody's journey is customized and just because her journey doesn't look like mine it doesn't take anything away from her success her success is just as important as mine just as big as as, as mine just Absolutely. because it 
it doesn't matter. And I think that's where we get caught up. A lot. I would agree. We get caught up. I use Beyonce a lot because I'm not part of the Beehive, but I use Beyonce a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple of good quotables we can go ahead on borrow yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i'm like everybody wants beyonce level success but what mm-hmm. if you are not supposed to have beyonce level success so are you just going to abandon your purpose is that what we're doing here? and listen and then goes right back to that point of listen beyonce is on chapter whatever but hey listen barbara what chapter are you on and can you can you be great as barbara because you trying to be great as Beyonce, I guarantee it's not going to work out for you. I guarantee you. Why? Because her spot is already filled. Mm-hmm. And it's being filled quite well by her. And so I need you to really get committed to bossing up as your most brilliant self. There, There is a lane of brilliance that is reserved for you. But if you keep trying to get in under my reservation then your table's going to sit empty. Mm-hmm. What's going to waste that's sitting on your table? I mean, what, these are just the, the, the little self-care, self-talks I have with myself, you know, just me. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> because, you know, I actually practice what I teach, you know? <laughs> you know? Everything, everything, you know, that I teach is coming from a, a you know, it's coming from personal space. And as a step where this coach, it should, you know? Because right. I'm you know, direct people on paths that I haven't even been down on, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. That goes into, that goes into integrity. So we talked about purpose. You brought our purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Now I feel like purpose has been watered down. The word purpose has been watered down because it's used a lot, you know, across social media. So I think mm-hmm. that uh, it's, you know, misused slightly and that's because of the watered down meaning. And I think that people are, are numb to the word purpose because it's so overused. Mm. So my whole business is based off of, it's based off of purpose because right. you know, for me, it was chasing purpose that got me, you know, to where I am today. It was chasing yeah. purpose that helped me to really stay stay in survivor mode you know Mm. uh, and thrive after being sexually abused it was purpose and so I was like okay well let me go to the go to the bible Mm -hmm. and do some research on a corporate see see if I can find a actual definition for purpose and I'm still so I haven't found that yet you guys so I'll definitely um keep you guys posted on that however in the meantime Marshawn Evans Daniels has a great definition for it do you know Marshawn I do okay so you guys if you guys never heard of Marshawn Evans Daniels definitely look her up on Instagram and follow her you will Mm -hmm. not regret it I promise you won't regret it so I was listening to a podcast episode where Marshawn was talking about her book, Believe Bigger, and um, she defined purpose. And her definition is perfect. Her definition is purpose is the natural impact you or your presence will have on others. It's the natural impact, you guys. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, she took everything in my head that I've been thinking, but couldn't just really like, you know, communicate well and put it in this perfect definition. Because I think, especially in the entrepreneur space, mm-hmm. people think their business is their purpose. And the business right. is not the purpose, it's the vehicle that you use to operate right. the purpose. Right. And I think because you know, people make their business their purpose. So when a business fails, they equate that to their personal failure. And it's like, no, sis, it's just, you know, it's just use another vehicle. Just like we got cars, we got motorcycles, you know, out here, we got SUVs, we got trucks. Like what vehicle is working for you? Yeah. You know, if the ES330 doesn't work, go get that Tesla. If that's, if that's too small, get you an SUV. If that's too big, then downsize to a Corolla. Like what vehicle, you know, fits the season that you're in right now? So it's the vehicle the operating purpose. It's not your purpose. And so I think if we focus on the impact, you know, um, then we can make sure that purpose is, is aligned in every area of our life. Because that's right. the thing that, that um, 
trips people up is that they seek purpose in one area, but they're wondering why their relationships are off. They're wondering why their finances, why they always broke. They're wondering why they don't have good communication, you know, with their husbands or their wives or their children. It's because purpose is not aligned in every area of your life, you know, yeah. and yeah. saying and saying with passion. I think people use passion and purpose in a change of way. When right. in actuality, they're both are important. Both Correct. Are important for you to live a fulfilled life. So tell us, how can we use our passion to operate in purpose and have that full life that we desire and deserve? So I think that that's a great question. And I think that you brought out a lot of really um, juicy points uh, from the perspective of knowing that one, passion and purpose are different. Um, Also understanding that they work together. And so I would have to say that to learn to operate or use our passion to operate in our purpose um, and therefore kind of yield the life that we desire and deserve, we would have to learn what I like to call the three E's, okay? And the three E's are embrace, emerge, and evolve. Here's what I mean by that. Life gives us a deck of cards. It gives us a hand, right? It's just dealt to us. We don't get to necessarily choose our circumstances. We don't get to choose those defining moments. We just have to play the hand that we're dealt. And so when we begin to literally embrace the fact that we're built for this, we are built to literally embrace and adapt. And I think that, you know, again, case in point, the pandemic has shown us what we are made of as a society, as a culture, as a race, a human race, what it is that we're built to be able to withstand and to tolerate and to adapt and adjust to and through, right? So then after you're able to embrace the fact that, okay, I was not built to break, then you can move beyond that and you can get into the place where you can emerge. And why I say emerge is because sometimes the process of embracing involves us going deep, and going down and going into the dark and the dirty places. And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good. It doesn't, um, you know, make sense for that matter all the time. But if you're willing to see that part of the process through, then you can emerge as a wiser, stronger, more courageous version of yourself that now is this, this container that has a capacity for life that you never had before, but you have to be willing to get to the place of emerging. And once you have emerged, ultimately you are able to evolve. And evolution is the good part because that's the place where you have this um, awareness that you did not have. So see, you were talking about the vehicles. I can have a car sitting outside, but if I don't know where the keys are, it doesn't do anything, right? So I can have the purpose, but if I don't have the passion, then there is no evolution. There is no impact. There is no big bang for me to have a theory to to create, you know what I mean, about life. And so what I find is that when we develop that awareness, we can better align, like you were saying, and then we can produce what we were sent here to produce, right? Mm -hmm. There is, um, there's a power in understanding that passion is designed to push you. It pushes you to get up, get out of bed, get out of your head, get into your life, get into the car, get into that vehicle, right? And then purpose is designed to pull you. That's the thing that pulls those keys out puts them into the ignition and gives you the courage and the strength to turn the key and then put your foot on the gas. And so they absolutely work together. They are not the same, but they are both necessary in order for you to evolve into who it is that you were created and designed to be. So I think that that is so key, what you just brought out in terms of how we uh, utilize the passion to ignite our purpose and therefore design or live a life by design and not just someone else's design but the design that we desire such a good good point man that was that was good you know embrace emerge and evolve yeah I can see every like huge pivotal turning point in my life I can see me you know embracing 
you know, emerging and then evolving. I love those. I love those three E's. And I, I love how you say that, you know, uh, embracing sometimes causes us to go deep. People Absolutely. don't want to go deep, Ayana. People don't want to go deep. I have been told many a times that, you know, my, what I talk about is, is way too deep. And mm-hmm. I, First, I, I I took it as a as a negative thing, you know, as yeah. you know, as something that I should change. But then I realized I'm like, no, don't do that because we got plenty of people who are trying to just teach surface level stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have plenty of people with surface level instructions out here, right? We need people who's willing to go deep. You know, and so instead of me trying to change that and um, ignore that, that fact, because literally for me to get to this point, you guys, I had to go deep. I had to go deep in myself to understand who I was up under all of the hurt, up under all Mm -hmm. of the trauma, the pain. Mm -hmm. Like I had to literally get to know who I was. And in order to do that, I had to go deep and go beneath all of the hurt so I can be able to uproot it so it can be gone so I can evolve into the person that God has created me to be you know and 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 not just on the surface level but on the inside too because me working on me from the inside out Mm -hmm. that's why you hear me be so passionate Mm -hmm. absolutely that's why it comes through that's why when you see me, you're like, or, or questioning, you know, how can I be so confident when I talk about the sexual abuse? Because I worked right. on me from the inside out. You, right. You know? So it's like, you guys, I, I was listening to the secrets of the millionaire uh, mindset. And he talked mm-hmm. about that. He talked about, you know, um, we try to change the fruit on the tree. And we think by changing the fruit on the tree, it's going to change the result. And he was just like, no, it doesn't matter because the seed that you planted, the roots is going to continue to, you know, produce that same fruit. That's right. But if you change the root of that thing, that's how you change the fruit. That's right. In order to get to the, to the roots, you guys, what you got to do? You got to dig. That's right. That's right. And I think that a lot of what we do meaning you and I in the in the lane that we serve in um, mm-hmm. is all about, honestly, I, I like to kind of give my clients an expectation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I like to tell them, listen, this is going to be a safe space for sure. It's going to be um, a learning zone for sure. But let me tell you what it's going to be first and foremost. From the gate, when we come to do this work together, we are going on an excavation mission. I am your tour guide. And my job is to help you to literally dig down so deep that you are digging up the bones, okay? Um, In Ezekiel, when we heard the Lord ask the question, can these dry bones live? We're digging that deep. We're digging up the dry, dirty, crusty stuff that we thought was dead, but it's actually not. It's releasing a smell that may not have a sound, but it still has an impact in your today. And once we finish digging all of that up, then, like you said, we can come to the place where we can now evaluate what is this animal? What is this thing? We can give it a name. We can put a face to it. We can identify it. And then we can learn from it. That's the evolution, that evolving process. So I am here to take you on this excavation mission because not only are we digging deep for the dirty, but we're also going for the gems. And gems are not on the surface. You got to go deep into the ocean to get a pearl. You got to go deep into the cold to get that diamond. That thing ain't sitting on the surface waiting for you. Girl, he ain't sitting outside of the cold, man. You got to go deep. And that's what we do is we serve people from the deep. And I love how the Bible talks about how deep calls out to deep. And I believe that that's who we talk to in our um, in our everyday interaction is in engagements from our platforms. We are calling out to the deep places, to the deep people, to the deep parts of you that need to be restored, that need to be rejuvenated, that need to be redirected. It is, it is really a work that we are assigned to that, like you said, you know, everybody's out here talking about purpose. Everybody's out here talking about passion, but listen, I can talk about it because I took the time to be about it. 
I can tell you what it looks like to self-sabotage because I've been there. I've done that. I got a whole entire outfit, okay? All the accessories to match. And so there's not going to be something that you're going to say to me that's going to catch me by surprise or cause me to judge you. But I'm going to continue to reach my hand out and say, but this is how I got. I built a bridge from self-sabotage to success. Let me show you how to lay these bricks and let's walk together. Mm. That's what we do. That's what we do. Man, I love that. We take them on an uh, excavation process. I absolutely I absolutely, absolutely love that. And see, and that's how people um, receive true transformation. It's because you're, going, because you're going deep, you know, because some some people probably jump from life coach to life coach to life coach, you know, um, with the same problem and issue. Right, and so because right. Because life coach didn't go deep enough. You know, I, and right. it's, a fine, it's a fine line too, you know, because some people need to go and talk to a therapist. Right. Um, so it's definitely a, a fine line, but that deep dive, that's how people receive true, real transformations. That's how, mm-hmm. they, that's how they receive it, you know, and, and, and receive transformation in a way that other people see it as well. Yes. When you truly transform, yes. other people see it as well. And they take notice and then they get intrigued and they want to know and inquire, like, what are you doing? Like, how right. are you so positive and stuff like that? And then that's your opportunity to, to share, you know, your testimony mm-hmm. if you feel comfortable. But it's definitely your moment to, to share your testimony because you could be a blessing mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. to, to that person um just by just by sharing so i know let's talk to the person who's like okay this is all great i hear what you guys are saying it makes Mm -hmm. sense but i don't know how to look past the trauma and the pain and the hurt so i can go deep right like let's talk about for a second how do we help them get clear on what their purpose-driven vision is so gosh i i know that place I have been there where I thought there was no hope, there was no sight, there was no yeah. light, you know, beyond this tunnel that I'm in, right? Because I have literally gone so deep that I now don't know how to get out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I have to tell you, I'm a quote junkie, right? I love, love, love quotes. And because um, I just love words. Yeah. And Jay-Z, we talked about Beyonce, so now we got to give some love to Jay-Z, right? So Jay-Z so said, <laughs> he said, your network is your net worth. Now, why am I giving you that quote? Because wins and losses are a matter of perspective, okay? You can allow your limits to challenge you or you can challenge those limits. I am at this point intentional about who's in my inner circle and who gets a backstage pass. There is a difference. There is a difference in the price of admission. And you also have to understand that the most beautiful part of life is the human experience that it comes wrapped in. So what that means is that you have to have wisdom and balance and you don't get wisdom and balance. Um, You don't get healing and help and hope unless you are willing to be brave enough to expose your scars. You know, um, my daughter, you know, she was learning to ride her bike and she would fall down sometimes and maybe skin a knee, right? And the immediate um, tendency was, mom, I need a Band-Aid. And I had to teach her and train her and say, listen, babe, sometimes fresh air is good for the wound. It helps the healing process along. And so I need you to just let it breathe. Let the air hit it. I promise it's not going to hurt as much as you think, but it will absolutely accelerate your healing process. And so sometimes we just have to be willing to, um, to submit to that process of healing by allowing the scar to hit the air. And it is scary not so much because of what we've even experienced, but oftentimes what I find is that we tell ourselves stories. We create a soundtrack that we replay over and over again that gets us hyped up, anxious, and all of these other, you know, my head spaces that are counterproductive to our healing. And healing often is a matter of the heart because your mind is a complex thing, but it knows how to self-protect. It goes into preservation mode. Your heart, on the other hand, is this organ that is literally the life source 
but it doesn't have as many mechanisms built into it to self-protect. That's why the Bible talks about guarding your heart. That's why when you learned and you heard about the men that would go to war and go to battle, they would have a breastplate. He talks about having a breastplate of righteousness as a part of that full armor. Why? Because all that's between really your breastplate and your heart is a couple of ribs. And those things are fragile. They break easy, right? And so then that leaves you open. It leaves you accessible. But the beauty in that is that as I remain open and I remain accessible, I can experience what it is to be beautifully human. And so your trauma does not have to be a point where you take the blow that causes you not to stand up again. Your trauma can actually be training for how to live your best life. But it's all a matter of perspective. All a matter of perspective. Mm, That was so good and you're absolutely right your trauma can be your training on how to live your life because I was literally um telling someone not too long ago that um while working in corporate America um it it was it was it was nothing for me to I was telling somebody not too long ago that while working in corporate America, that it was never um, too much of a big issue for me to ask for ask for a raise, you know, okay. for uh, you know, uh, doing uh, reviews, employee reviews, you know. Mm-hmm. And it got to a point where coworkers would ask me to um, help them. <laughs> Yeah, Don't you love it? put together, you know, their presentation so they can ask for, ask for a raise as well. And, you know, somebody asked me, you know, how are you so confident, you know, with asking for more money? And I'm just like, well, sweetie, do you know where I come from? Listen. That, uh, hey, where, where Listen. I come from, I am not scared of him. Because what are you going to say? The only thing he can say is no, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like. I, I, over time, I realized that everything I went through was training mm-hmm. Absolutely. For, to, to help me to live my life. It was, you know, what I went through helped to erase some of the fears. Because had I not grew up in mm-hmm. that situation, I probably would have even more fears. You guys, I'm not fearless. Right. Okay. Right. I'm not fearless. You know, um, I do have fears, but my fears can be a lot stronger had I not gone through what I went through and built the confidence and built the resilience that I need to to keep going. It's all yeah. about how you view how you view your trauma, and I love that you said that you know we can use it as a as a training for Absolutely. how we should go about our life. You know, because um, it's all it's all mindset, and that Jay Z mm-hmm. quote. Man, it's so perfect because even with you guys, if you're watching the video version, I'm showing you, uh, I'm showing you the book, but it's a, it's a study guide on Exodus and numbers because Mm -hmm. I've been um, studying the Israelites and Jay-Z's quote is so on point. And it just goes to show that there's nothing new up under the sun because one of the main reasons why the Israelites was constantly doubting what God constantly doubting God's promise even though they saw miracle at the miracle at the miracle it's because when they left Egypt they had brought Egyptians with them mm-hmm. so they had people in the midst who didn't necessarily believe in the same God that they believed in they had people in the midst who would you know um worship um these other type of gods. So they had these people in they miss that even though God was performing all these miracles, they were still in their ear. Well, yeah, remember yeah. we had this in Egypt. Remember we was able to do this, but why come we don't have this? I rem- you know, uh-huh. it caused them to, to doubt even though they saw things for themselves. So the people that you have around you are important and I teach you how to build a support a support team in my class because that is so important like like they say it takes a village to to raise a child Absolutely. it's not just a child <laughs> it, takes a village. it takes a village to operate in purpose as well Absolutely. You know? so it's it's super important that 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 was good friend that was good um you know, one thing that we agree on 
is that, you know, we're here to impact the world, right? We're here, we have a purpose, you know, and we're here to operate in purpose. And I was listening to your gift series. I told you I was binge watching your, your <laughs> Yes. And I was listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was listening to your, your gift series mm -hmm. and um, you gave us a call to action for 21. And I think it yeah. was so powerful. You told us to be a gift that is given in the new year. Mm -hmm. I was like, hoo, hoo, hoo. be a gift. I'm like, man, that's going to trip some people up because there's yeah. some work that you need to do in order to be a gift. In Absolutely. order to be a gift for someone else. But I want you to break it down for us, though. How do we become a gift that's worth being given in 21? One thing you will learn about me is I like to make things easy for people to remember <laughs> and relate to, right? And so, and I told you, I love words. I love quotables. They're my favorites. Um, the gift series was all about getting intentional about fearlessly thriving, right? And so how do you become a gift? Well, thing number one is that you got to tap into the fact that the awesomeness about becoming a gift is knowing that you came here that way. You were already born a gift. And we talked a little bit earlier about getting um, connected and coming to a place of awareness, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you become aware that you're a gift, then you're ready to go through the process. And so you need to remove some of the debris perhaps that is covering your gift. Um, you may need to dust off the packaging that your gift is in. Um, maybe in order for you to get there, you need to get intentional, make up your mind because a lot of what slows us down, trips us up or even stunts our growth is our own mind, right? And so if you can just get beyond some of the debris and the dust, um, I love to watch certain movies like during the holidays, right? We're just coming off the holidays. And one of my favorite movies, Don't Judge, Don't Laugh, and I Am Dating and It's All Good, is uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right? And Clark gets locked in the attic as he's hiding Christmas gifts, right? And he starts to put his little things here and there and pick his special hiding spots. And then at one point he reaches his hand and then pulls out this gift that looks like it hasn't been there for about five, 10 years. It was so full of dust. It still had the wrapping paper and the bow on it. it even had a label, but it was dusty and it seemed like it was forgotten about. But he went back, he put his hand on it and guess what? It immediately became redeemed for what it was. It was a gift. And that gift was chosen with intent. It was full of purpose and it was packaged, not just to look pretty, but to be given. What joy do you get in taking the time to go and to choose something and to do it with a certain person in mind and then to put it in a place where it's presentable for them never to unwrap it? If your gift is not given, if it is never unwrapped, I mean, it's like having salt but not using it. So you purpose, you were purposed to come here and to give all of yourself and to give uniquely what it is that you were packaged with. Mm -hmm. You have to get intentional mm -hmm. about giving yourself as the gift that you are. And that means honoring the value that you possess, acknowledging the purpose that you're wrapped in and being quite frankly, intentional, hell bent if you have to be on getting to the, the, the giver, to, to the point, to the place where your gift was supposed to go. So we're in the, the Amazon movement, right? Like never before, because we all on lockdown. Let me tell you something. You don't care if your package is dented, if it had to come from Alaska, Hawaii, or Timbuktu, when you hit order, you expect your gift in a certain amount of time. And you, listen, it'll be delivered by 8 p.m. The mailman don't, don't even come at 8 o'clock at night, but the Amazon man can. Why? I'm looking out the window. Carrying That's a the gift. Time. Listen, he's carrying a gift. And the gift is so important that they don't just drop it off. They take a picture of that bad boy, email it to you. Your gift is here. Your package has arrived. And guess what? It doesn't matter 
if your package was damaged in transit, if the terrain that it had to cover to get to you was kind of rough, none of that makes a difference once it arrives. Once your gift gets to your doorstep, all of the other stuff becomes irrelevant. And so I want to encourage the people who are trying to figure out how to give themselves as this gift, how to become this gift in 2021, get intentional about fearlessly thriving. That means it doesn't matter what you had to go through to get there. It doesn't matter what your wrapping paper looks like. It might be a little bent. It might be a little ripped. It might now be a whole different color than you originally wrapped it in. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'm intentional about being fearless and owning who I am, acknowledging my value, and thriving. And how do I thrive as a gift? I get given. I give myself to my purpose with passion. And if you can manage to use those three E's that we talked about earlier, that embrace, that emerge, that evolve, if you can do that, I promise you, it doesn't matter how much they mess up, how delayed they are with shipping, your gift will get to its destination and it's going to get there right on time. We are impatient. We don't always like to wait for our gift because we are prime society now. Oh, two days is going to be here, but don't let two days turn to three and it's World War Three. But sometimes we got to wait on the good gifts. I don't know about you, but some of my packages this year came after Christmas. And guess what? I was still just as glad to receive them. They were still just as much of a blessing. And so are you. Mm -hmm. mm, that was so that was so powerful I love the examples that you gave of Amazon and National National Lapoon and you know what and when he pulled out that that gift that gift that was in that box the value never deterred it never went down never. it was still never. just as valuable you yeah. know so you guys be the gift like she said it doesn't matter what you've gone through you know sexual abuse the death of a husband the death of a child being incarcerated it doesn't matter what you have gone through people right. just want their gift they don't care how we get to them just right. how it gets to them because right. they know once they get that gift they are excited about the joy they're going to feel, the happiness they're going to feel, the, the solution um, yeah. that is going to provide for the problem that they have, you know, because yeah. on Amazon, yeah, we buy things because we want them, but we also look for things to solve a problem. That's right. You are somebody's solution. Stay and you know, they probably been waiting on you forever. Forever, so, ever. Forever, ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> So you know, cut, cut the time down a little bit and, and, yeah. and work yourself and don't get so caught up in thinking that, um, oh, but this happened. So who am I to say mm -hmm. share with somebody else? People right. are looking for people they can relate to. Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they looking for people that they can relate to. Like they want to know that you have been through what it is that they have gone through because now you are qualified. Now I know. That's right. Now you qualify. Now I'm really going to listen to you because you don't right. understand what it is that I'm going through. You guys, when we at that low point, we tend to think that nobody else understands what it is that we're going through. Mm -hmm. Nobody else has gone through this. Oh my God, I am the only one experiencing this thing. Uh, uh, I'm in my yeah. low and that is a laugh in the pit of hell. Somebody else has experienced that. You uh -huh. know, how will we know if nobody is willing to share their testimony? That's right. How That's would that right. other person know? How would that other person know that all I need to do is just have a little bit more faith? Hold, hold on just a little bit longer. Not be impatient. Right. How, how is that person going to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel if you don't tell them that you've been through the tunnel, you saw the light? How are they, how are they going to know? So, show me your scars and show me your success. Show me your scars and show me your success yeah. because you can have both in your life and still be deemed valuable, still be deemed a gift. How about you already have both in your life yes, and you are a gift? Yes, ma'am. There's nobody on this, on this 
God's green earth who don't have a scar. And if you are sitting here and you listen to us right now, the fact that you are alive, you are successful, period. Right. You are already coexisting with your scars. That's you right. Are already a gift. You are already validated. Absolutely. Already. There was a purpose on your life before you was even here. Yes. We need to get that. We need to get that in our head. Sis, mm-hmm. I can talk to you all day long. <laughs> I can talk to you all day long. I'm not, listen, it's the it's the sister from another Mister thing. <laughs> when you serve in the same lane, there is just so much stuff that you can just exchange back and forth. And then when you have like the whole six degrees of separation piece, because I mean, I'm I was still like jumping in my seat when you were talking about how you and Nick connected, mm-hmm. and and you know, and then from that came this. You know what I mean? And I need for people to really catch even that. You know, there was um there was a, an appointed answer from this particular YouTuber because I tried some other. But this was the one that was supposed to say yes. And when she said yes, then her cup poured into my cup and that caused an overflow because now I'm connected to a whole, before I was just drinking from the stream. Now I'm connected to an ocean. There's a never ending situation that's happening right now. I need people to understand that. I need them to get that. If you don't stop giving me cheese, it's cold in Houston today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> we just, I mean, we 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 always look for these like signs and this lightning and thunder and and I'm telling you, it can be as simple as your baby is walking around in your shoes around the house, but purpose and passion are speaking. They are surrounding you, mm-hmm. and they are calling you. They are pushing you. They're pulling you. Mm-hmm. Listen, what are you gonna do? It's time for you to make up your mind. It's time for you to make a move. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you guys, in order for that conversation to happen with Nick, I had to go through a silent period because I told you I pitched, you know, a couple of YouTubers and they did not respond, but I had to get through that silence, you know, painfully, you know mm. what I mean? And so we don't give our we don't give ourselves the grace and the space to get through things, you know, to get through our silent periods because sometimes God will separate us from everybody yeah. else who are working us, right? And when you in that moment of solidarity, you know, learn what it is that you need to learn. Learn what it is that you need to learn because you never know what connection you need to make. So had I let those previous YouTubers, had I, because I didn't respond, had I been like, you know what? Okay, I'm just not going to pitch any more YouTubers. The conversation with Nick would never have happened. Therefore, this conversation would not have happened. And this connection would not have been made, right? Action. Come on. It took action, you know, and in order for me to take that action, I had to put a strategy in place. You got strategy in, in place because it's, it's not going to be easy. It's not, it's not going to be easy, but it is going to be worth it. Yes, it will. It is going to yes, be, it's going to be worth it though. So you guys, ah, oh, I just love talking <laughs> to you. Love talking to you. Um, but before I let you go, yes, please give us a, a book or audible recommendation because I'm addicted to audible. Okay. Give us a book that you've read or, or an audible book that you've listened to that has impacted your life in some way. Absolutely. So, oh my gosh, first of all, huh, I just, I love even thinking about this because last year, one of my goals, especially, and, and this happened before the pandemic, but certainly at the point where the pandemic set in, it was like, aha, it makes sense. I had set myself a goal to read one book a month. Modest, yes, but when you are full time working, full time wife, and full time mom, and, and full time entrepreneur, and reading is a luxury, right? An hour to read a day is a luxury, right? So I set myself this goal and I exceeded my goal. Yay! But I'm telling you, I was able to tap into some valuable information and some amazing people, right? And so one of the books that I read was called Planted to Produce. Seven Shifts to Activate Your Creative Soul by Takora Davis. And she is on Instagram and she is at takoradavis.com. And this book, this book inspired me to stop focusing on the how 
and start focusing on who. And it's really easy to find yourself um, with the wrong focus where that's concerned because honestly, it's just the inversion of a couple of letters between how and who, right? Mm -hmm. And so we get so caught up and we get so um, sidetracked when our focus is off. But this book I love because it absolutely inspired me to embrace the creative that I am. Um, it also encouraged me to embrace um, all of the things that come with being a creative. A lot of times creatives are misunderstood because we see differently, we hear differently, we process differently, we output on a different frequency and even a different speed than other people. So we're often misunderstood even in our own families, right? And then of course, after I finished you know, embracing that, then I was able to emerge from my self-imposed survival mode stance. So you talked earlier about um, that self-protection mode, right? And so what I did as a creative was I did what I do best. I became a chameleon. And so if, if we were stiff necked today, then okay, I can fit in there. And if we were, yay, then I could fit in there. And, you know, but I literally became a chameleon all the time, um, neglecting the authenticity of who I really was, right? And so I was able to come out of that self-imposed survival stance and then in turn um, evolve into the season that I was supposed to be thriving in, right? It, this book challenged me to confront my common thoughts that literally were coming to choke the life out of the creative me. It caused me to challenge my decision-making power, right? And it also um, forced me to make a move, to move from visualization to actualization. But it was all my choice. And so I had to own that power and then I had to make a move. I had to do something with it. And so when I did that, I understood that I was really being charged with truth um, around my calling and that I had an uh, obligation to take action via the confessions coming out of my own mouth from the word of God. And I had to affirm myself. So it was a combination of the confessions and the affirmations that caused me to accept the challenge and the charge to be able to stand here today. And so that book was super powerful and instrumental in me being able to maximize what would become the year that was 2020. Um, and what I love the most about it, honestly, it was a quick read. I, I promise you, I don't even think the book was 100 pages. It was the quickest read, but it was packed full of power. It, when I say this, the title, again, planted to produce, it's going to produce some stuff. And it was seven shifts to activate your creative soul. And I think sometimes we um, neglect um, choosing material that's actually going to pour into who we are. There's so much out there it's like clubhouse. Like you can jump in and out of 50 million, 11,000 rooms, right? But what's the room you're supposed to be in? What is the, the soundtrack you're supposed to be listening to? Because it's not, it's not okay to be busy and not productive. That's not okay. Mm -hmm. So that book blessed my socks off. And I hope that some of you will go and, and grab your copy and just dig into that and let it be a part of your planting season because we know that spring is actually planting season. Uh, fall is harvest season and we're about to head on into spring. So let's go ahead and plant some things that we expect to spring forth for the year that is 2021. Mm, man, I'm about to check that book out. You know, they say you don't have to be eternal to be effective. Come on. So Come on. Man, so for you to get all of that out of less than 100 pages, oh yeah, I'm definitely yeah. going to have to check out. I'm definitely going to have to check out her book, um, "Planted to Produce." I love yeah. that. Um, yeah. Those are the type of books. See, that's that. Those are those trans that that transformative. That's that transformation. There it is. So working on themselves from the inside out. That's how mm -hmm. they can see true transformation. I, yeah. I love that so thank you for sharing that book i'm definitely gonna have to check her out and check her out she's to core davis on instagram too you said yes she is yep okay i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to check her out as well so last question when describing the meaning of living your truth complete this phrase i'm gonna give you two words you tell me which your third word is okay okay self-awareness mm -hmm. purpose and okay I'm going to give you a quick phrase. It's, it's only three words, but I'm going to give you a phrase. 
Um, self-awareness, purpose, and authenticity over applause. I'll take that, friend. I'll take that. that that's it for me. That's it for me. <laughs> over applause. Yes, ma'am. You, you can't just throw that at people and, and <laughs> then don't, don't break it down for them. Break it down for them, girl. I will give you this tidbit. Um, so here it is that most of us spend our lifetime trying to figure out who am I and what am I here for? Talking about that passion and purpose, right? It's been all throughout our conversation. Mm -hmm. Listen, if you can tap into who you are, that means what you look like in the mirror. Indy Irie said it this way. She said, every freckle on my face is where it's supposed to be. If you can just embrace every freckle on your face, know that it's where it's supposed to be and show up unapologetically comfortable in your own skin, then you already win. And it doesn't matter who's in your corner and who's applauding or if it's deafening silence because the only sound, the soundtrack to success is your voice saying, well done, mm -hmm. period. Stop seeking other people's validation because validation is for parking. Confirmation is for calling. You've been called to this thing. Answer the call. Confirmation is for calling. And guess what, y'all? Y'all have already been confirmed. Boom. You have already been confirmed. So I'm going to need you to answer that call. Man. Come on. I love that authenticity over applause. You know, um, I told myself that on December 31st, 2021, I want to be able to look over the year and be like, damn, Keisha, you did that. You like, did that. You, did that. <laughs> you went out, you didn't care. You sent the yep. email, you made the phone calls, you had the conversations, you showed up proudly, like you did it. I do not want, you know, um, 2021 to end with me thinking like, dang, if I only just would have did one more day or mm -hmm. you know, one more hour towards, you know, whatever it is that, that I'm working on, that yeah. I'm literally going to um, judge the success of 21 based off of me. You, that's it. Um, and how many of us are literally living our lives for the applause? Because we haven't done the internal work and we're looking for validation and we're looking from that but we're looking for validation from imperfect people mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. have to validate you because they don't even validate themselves but you putting all this pressure and all this hope into this person to validate you and they don't even validate themselves their own self-worth is out of whack. I mean, you said this is. And, but you think they're going to they're gonna make you worthy. Let's not go into a whole other podcast episode. Because <laughs> I want to be we are going to connect again. We are going to connect again. I am absolutely going to share this jewel um, with my, my, my tribe because, I mean, this, this vibe right here, everybody needs to have some of this. So we are going to keep pouring from this cup. Um, Y'all look out for another collaboration with me and Lakeisha because it has to happen. So I had super enjoyed part one. Oh, but there's more. My cup is not empty yet. I got to keep pouring. I love it. Thank you, friend. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to need you to sit on the information that you heard today and I'm going to need you to marinate on it. Again, if you didn't do it before, like I told you to, okay, I'm going to need you to go back and listen with your pen and your paper because I need you to pick up every gem that was dropped. I need you to take in everything that was pushed out and I need you to write it down so you can execute it. And then I need you to go over to strategizeyourvision.com to sign up for my master life class so I can walk you through the formula step by step by step so you can have the strategy that you need to manifest the life that you desire and deserve. You don't have to do it by yourself. Let me help you. 
Sign up today because the doors are open and enrollment won't last long. Again, go to strategizeyourvision.com for more information and to enroll in class today, or you can click the link that's in the show notes. Well, family, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week. Again, if you need help creating a strategy that's needed to manifest like you desire and deserve, then head on over to strategizeyourvision.com to enroll in class today. The doors are officially open, but not for long. Also note that all Audible recommendations given on any episode are linked in the show notes below, and you can try Audible for free. So please remember to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Also, don't forget to click the community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected. As you know, I set a lot to go to touch one million hearts within the first two years of the podcast, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share the conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on social media. Tag me at Lakeisha Woodard. You guys have been doing so, and I really appreciate you for doing that. So keep sharing and keep tagging me, all right? Family, I appreciate you. My heart is filled with so much gratitude. So until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful. 